so there is one more concept left in c language that is storage classes in c but this is different from c++ concept class object concept and this is different storage classes in c so in this video we'll talk about everything about storage classes what is a storage class types of storage class properties how to use storage classes in a program why we use it if you use storage class class in your program then you know how to use it and what it will tell about our program right everything all this you know every single detail about this thing we'll discuss in this video with the help of a program also right i'll show you practical but before that i just want to tell you one thing this summer geeks for geeks is going to bring back fun to your screens with the biggest virtual event in 2022 presenting geeks summer carnival so experience fun excitement entertainment and games and also get loads of discount goodies and various other cool stuff to relish this carnival in its truest form geeks for geeks is inviting you to experience starters before the main course starting from 26th of march there are going to be various tickets that definitely you don't want to miss out with these tickets you get the best of the courses at the best prices so let me share some more details about the same one ticket is of rupees 2000 and what benefits you will get here doubt assistance for three months plus premium quarterly with this ticket and you will get dsa at the lowest price ever second is of 5000 and here you will get doubt assistance for six months plus premium plus quarterly and your ticket to get one of the best gfg's course cip at a huge discount next is of 8000 rupees and in this what benefit you will get premium plus yearly plus goodies t-shirt pen mask stickers keychain and much more so it would be easy and budget friendly entry to any of the live courses of gfg and here you will also have a chance of wall of wishes like you can wish for any course fill out the detail and you can send request if you want to you know explore more if you have any you know a question then you can go to the faq section frequently asked question and you can see the answer of these questions maybe you will get the you know answer of your question so this summer carnival is all about enhancing your skills so definitely you don't want to miss out an opportunity like this so all the links relevant links and details i'll put in the description box of this video you can go and check out now let's see what is storage classes in c see when we declare any variable in c how we declare like int a something like this and if you initialize this variable like this int a is equal to 10 then what this line tells about this variable like name of the variable is a value what you are going to store is 10 and which type of value the type the data type this thing this is type of the value you, you can store in this variable three things it is going to tell right so basically a variable now next thing is see a variable is associated with basically two things one is type and one is storage class so this type means the data type this thing it will tell the you know type of this the what type of value you can store here the data type data type obviously name this will tell right now what is this storage class now another things associated with this type of this variable is what like if i don't i'll not initialize this thing int a then first thing is what default value it will take right some other things or some other points which are associated with this variable right next is what location where this variable would be stored in ram or in store in register yes you heard it right we can also store variables in register no not we can store it depends on the compiler right that also i'll tell you so third thing is you can say the scope of the variable we have heard about local scope global scope right where you can access scope means where you can access this this variable from where this variable can be accessed the scope right next thing is what you can say the lifetime lifetime means till when you uh, it's like till when this variable is alive like within a function suppose i'm uh, writing a function fun one and here i'm declaring a variable int x is equal to 10 and this is end of this function so the lifetime of this variable is till here till this line till the termination of this function after this you can say this variable is dead this variable is alive 
till here. We can access this variable throughout this function, but after this it is dead. So this is you can say the life of this uh, variable, right? Now, what thing will tell these properties of this variable? Because this int will tell only the type, which type of value it can store, right? So what extra thing which is associated with this variable will tell about these thing like the default value of this is what where this variable would be stored the scope and the lifetime. These things would be told by the storage classes. Yes and where you will write storage class here <coughs> before the type. Now we have four type of storage classes see auto register, external and static, right? And these storage classes will tell these things about the, this variable, right? Now, see, we have done many programs, we have written many programs till now, but we haven't used these kind of things, right? So, our, our program were right. So, by default, if you will not write anything here, by default compiler will associate a storage class with it that is auto this by default auto so if you don't write anything this is fine if you write something like this auto int b this is also fine this is also would be considered under the storage class auto this also be considered under the storage class auto so explicitly if you write this keyword that is also fine if you don't write that would be considered in auto storage class right now now see I hope you are aware about these, these things, default value, like if you don't declare this thing, if you don't initialize this thing, so sometimes it will take zero default value, sometimes this will take garbage default value, right, when you print this. So it depends on these storage classes, which storage class you write here, according to that it will take default value. So I guess you don't have any uh, confusion in default value, location means where we, we are going to store this in register or in. Uh, like uh, RAM main memory. Now scope is what? Where you can access this? Now scope is also for you can say uh, mainly three types. Block, block, function and one is function or you can say method or one is program three type of scope a variable can have depends on the storage class you use how to use that also we'll discuss right and which storage class is having which scope that is that also we will use but first of all you need to understand what is block scope what is function and what is program scope this is very important first of all otherwise many students get confused in this scope especially in this point right and lifetime also i guess you have idea like till when we can access that variable one variable like global, we are we are we declare a variable globally. Then you you can access that variable till the end of the program, right? So this is what you can say life of variable. Basically, scope is you need to understand. Now block means what? Something you write within these curly braces that would be considered as block. Function, you know, any function we can write like void, add this and this. This is function scope. This is what function, right? You are defining this function. So this is block. Anything which is in curly braces, this would be considered as block. It's not compulsory that we write this thing after the function only. In programming anywhere, we can define our block. Let me just show you one uh, no, example of this. These three things, let me show you example one by one. See, I'm writing a sim simple program here. See, in main, First of all, I'm taking a variable int a is equal to 10. Then this, then here I'm taking int a again is equal to 20 and print f. So this would be what I am considering inside block and I'm printing just value of a. And after this also I'm printing value print f percentage d a so this would be considered as this is what block so this variable this a 
this this is not duplicate thing because this is yeah this is what function scope this is main function so main function scope is from here to here this is function scope within this function scope we have a block also so this this a is having this block scope within this block only we can use this a so what it will print inside block and this a it will print 20 the value right it will not take this one the print of this statement this would take value which is closer which is you know close to this a now close to this a is this a or this a this value right so it will print 20 within this block and this print f this a will print what after this block this a the life of this a is no it is dead you can say we cannot access this a this value 20 outside this block so outside this block this a is this printf is within this function. So, in this function we have, do we have declaration of a? Yes, int a is equal to 10 definition. You can say this 10 value. So, it will print 10. So, this is, this a is having this function scope. This is having this block scope, right? Again, if I write one more function like void fun. So, this a is having this function scope. This is what function scope. This is function. So, this is function scope. So, this a we can use throughout this function. So, this a will print 30, right? Now, again, suppose here, here, I am, here I am writing one more block. After this block, one more block and in this block, I am just writing printf percentage d and a plus plus. That is it. And after this, again printf percentage d a and after this line I am closing main function after writing return 0, right. And within this function I have this thing and one more I have af before this main int a is equal to 50, this I am taking after the header files. So, this a is outside of this function. So, this a is having program scope throughout the program where you can access this throughout the program you can access this right. Now, see <coughs> this time what output you will get <coughs> this is one block this is second block we have now block 1 and block 2. So, this will give 20 right but in this block we are not declaring any variable a but I am printing a plus plus. So, it will not give error what it will do. Now, this block is within this function within this function. So, within this block no a can we use can this we can use value of this block no the 20 would be within this block only after that it would be dead. Now, which a value it will print which is closer to a now this value. So, it will take this value the, in which function this block is main function in main function do we have any definition of this a this variable a yes we have a and it will take value 10. So, now it will print 10 and a plus plus means now value becomes 11. Now, after this block again we have a so obviously this is in, in this function so it will print 11 it will print 11 now and in this function obviously this function we are going to call suppose here I am going to call this function fun that is it. <coughs> so, we are calling this function within this function do we have a yes 30 we have so it will print 30. If we do not have this line here I am just calling function here. So, first a value 30 you will get 30 after that within this block yes 20 you will get after this now what value it will get there is no declaration within this block. Now, in this function also main also we have no declaration of a. Now, see it will check globally do we have any a value? Yes, we have a is equal to 50 globally. So, it will access that value. So, it will print now 50 and a plus plus means this value now becomes 51 in memory. And again it will print in this function we do not have any a from this function it cannot use the value. So, what value it can use? If we have any global declaration of a that value it can use. Do we have? Yes, we have that is 51. So, it will print now 51, right. If we have suppose int a also and b also, b is equal to 10. 
So, within this function obviously we can print percentage d b. So, it will print 10, but in this in this main function if I want to print like print f percentage d and b this line will give error because this b is undefined undeclared variable for this function. This b is having a function scope within this function only after this function this b is dead we cannot access this b in another function. If we have any global b is equal to uh, suppose 100 then it will print 100 then it is fine. But this b within this function b value would be 10 and this b would be print would be taken as the global value. So, I hope now you understand the block scope, the function scope and the program scope right. So, now let me show you practical of this thing. See we have this program first of all I am not going to take this global one we are taking in in main I am taking a variable a I am initializing it with one and I am taking a function function one I am calling that function here in function one the definition is a right. Now, within this we have one block this this block within this block also I have one a value is done 10 and I am printing the just a value second block I am just printing a plus plus no declaration of a and after this block also I am going to print percentage d and a right and let us suppose here we write uh, inside main. This is inside block 1 and here I am writing inside block 2. This is block 2 right and I am just printing A in function 1 also I am printing A. So, let me just show you the output here. No global uh, variable I am declaring right. I am just taking the block scope and function scope variable of A fine. Now see ok uh, this warning we are getting because uh, uh, before calling we have not declare we have not give the prototype of this function. So, let me just give the prototype here void fun 1 that is it right and now let me just run this again and show you the output. See now let us see what output you are getting here. First of all inside function 1 we are calling function 1 and it is printing 23 we have 23 in function 1 then inside block 1 we will get value 10 value 10. Now inside block 2 which value we do not have any declaration of a. So, in function yeah this block is within main function in main function we have value 1. So, it will print inside block 2 1 not 21 its value is 1 2 is of block 2 right. Now this this a will print what now a plus plus means this value 1 becomes 2 now this printf this printf will be uh, print value inside main and value 2. I hope now you are clear about this uh, scope. Let me just inside block 2 right and now we are not taking this one we are taking a global value right. Now let us see what output you will get let me just run this again. See first same inside function 1 23 inside block 1 10 inside block 2 now which value the global one we do not have any value in this function scope. So, it will search for the global value global value you do have yes a is equal to 50. So, it will print 50 and inside main this also will access this global value because we do not have any value of a within this main function. So, 51 right now if in this we have int a as well as uh, we have int b is equal to 89.
So I hope now all the properties of this like default and uh, whatever properties storage class will tell default value storage uh, so like uh, the location and the scope and lifetime is clear to you right so basically scope is clear to you blog function and this uh, global scope i guess you will not be confused in this type of thing now right sometimes they ask an in interview also they ask these type of questions within this blog also they write this thing within this blog they'll write this thing but they'll not declare anything here so what value it will print whether it will first of all it will search for the function scope value if you don't have any value in function scope it will search for global scope value then it will print right so this is very important so in the next video we will see the types of storage classes so now i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye take care